Hey everybody, Jeff Reinhardt and Mike Gross here, LMP in Lan uh, Lancaster Online. Uh, welcome to a special edition of LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Bobby Ray Hall Lexus. One Lancaster County football team still standing in the state playoffs, and it's Cocalico. They play Friday night out in Altoona against Pine Richland, the uh, the Whippy old champ, in a state semifinal. Win you go home. Uh, win win you go to the state championship game. Lose you go home and go to ba uh, basketball and wrestling practice the next week. We have tons of questions for this guy, the skipper, Brian Stroll, head coach of Cocalico. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Uh, we'll start you with a <coughs> softball. Uh, what's this ride been like and, and another week with your kids and getting ready for a state semifinal? A lot of excitement, obviously. Yeah, I mean, in one word, kind of magical, to be honest with you. And, and we talked to our kids about making history, the whole 12 seed thing, and um, you know, leading up to next week. And uh, for weeks, they've been picked against by a lot of people. And um, you know, I think they believed and we believed in them as coaches. And, uh, you know, I stopped them before the game on Friday night and just had them look up at the stands and said, look at how many people from the community are here and they believe in you guys too. Um, so it was really cool to go out and play a pretty good game. And, uh, you know, there's always things you got to improve, but um, you know, it's been really neat to see the community come together and what, you know, what a football team can do for a community and vice versa. Coach. If you ask any coach who's had a successful season, he says, well, the kids really brought in and they're working hard and they're showing up for practice every day and all that stuff. But this is different. I don't, I'm not sure I've ever seen a turnaround like this. Not a turnaround, maybe that's not the right word, but to get from where you were to where you are now. Forgetting all that intangible sort of coaching cliche stuff. How has this happened? Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, Early on in the season, we turned the ball over a ton. Uh, I keep coming back to that. We were a minus 10 turnover ratio after week seven. And I think our kids were frustrated in how they were playing and they felt like they were capable of a lot more than what we had shown. And um, you know, the turnovers have totally flipped. We've been plus 14, I believe, since. The thing that we're trying to drive through to the kids now is, you know, you're gonna remember this for years to come. And what you've accomplished, you've accomplished, and it's awesome. But now you've got to switch your mindset to trying to win a state championship. Like the district championship is over. Now it's, you know, there's no seeds. You're playing team from across the state. There's a perennial powerhouse. Like they're, they're trying to win a state title and we, we can't be satisfied and um, get ready for them. You're winning all these games on the road. And we threw out the seed thing several weeks back. I know you beat like a five and a two and a one, but you're winning away from home. You have a nice home field advantage up there. What are you preaching? Like us against the world? Like, you know, what are those bus rides like? And, and how are they doing this away from home every week? That's really impressive. Uh, I mean, we started the year 0 for 4 on the road. Like our wow. wins were all at home. We were 5-0 and 0 at home and started 0-4 and on the road. And uh, it was kind of a, a little joke that we had going. At, our booster club provides subs after the game. And it's like, you know, these subs just don't taste very good after a loss. And you know, we finally got a win on the road. It was the whole thing about the victory sub. And, you know, now we've had a couple of victory subs in a row. So that's been, uh, been enjoyable for sure. But, you know, I think, like I said, the community support, whether we're at home or away, has been awesome. You could coach for your entire adult life and have a great career and never have something like this. I mean, this is really special. What does it mean to you? Forget the kids for a minute. What does it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, personally, I think whenever, you know, as an assistant going through it, it's one thing. But I think when you're the one that things fall on, it's yeah. just a lot more responsibility. And, you know, when you're new at it, you always wonder, like, am I ready for this? You know, I think you never know if you're ready yeah, until you're right. in those shoes. And, I mean, what, uh, what Dave did to help prepare me for this was, you know, I can't thank him enough, obviously, but you know, I think it's just some some validation that not so much what I'm doing, but what our staff is doing, and I think our kids have bought into the whole culture that you know we've been preaching, and that you know that we're trying to continue from what Coach Kaufman started, what Coach Ginger continued, and you know accelerated, and just try to keep it going from there. So, yeah, uh, it's been been pretty neat for sure. The first thing that jumped out at me when I looked at Pine Richland stuff, their O line, they have some big boys. They average like 265 per man. They got some 290s, some 275s. Is that a con is that a concern? It starts in the trenches. You yeah. you know that better than anybody. But they ob they obviously have some beef. Is that a problem? I mean, I think talking with our defensive staff, honestly, it's been a concern for several weeks throughout the season. I mean, we're often undersized, and you know, we try to utilize what we're good at. We have speed, we have quickness, we have tenacity, um, and I'll take our D line against. You know, anybody's offensive line and 
Uh, they're obviously going to be big, they're going to be strong, they're going to be physical, but so was Exeter and so were a lot of the teams that we played throughout the year. So, you know, I think you try to get your kids, like I said last week, to believe, believe in their ability and um, go out and do what they've been coached to do and do it to the best of their ability and let the chips fall where they may. You know, when a team truly cares about one another and they don't want it to end, I think that's huge. Um, you know, we were in week eight knowing that we had to win out to even have a chance and, um, you know, they could have folded, but, you know, and just kind of play it out and see what happens. But uh, they've certainly come together. I think the other thing is just they're competitors. Like we get in games and you just see those game faces and they, they're going to lay it on the line. So um, really proud of them. And we are back from Cocalico where the amazing story of the Eagles continues. We want to thank uh, Coach Brian Stroll for uh, spending some time with us. And we're back at the friendly confines of the studio Nippers. for the LL Football Roundtable. The, the, maybe the penultimate edition thereof, brought to you by uh, Bobby Ray Hall Lexus. Seated to my left is John Walk. Seated to my right is Jeff Reinhardt, the familiar guys here talking football. And really two teams remaining from our league, both playing in state semifinals this weekend, both facing interesting, considerable opponents. But I think that both of these teams, it's just astounding. Mm -hmm. what they have done and we've talked about you know we were talking uh, about cocalico but also why i'm missing their domination but not domination last week yeah uh surprisingly yeah however uh let's talk a little bit about their opponent yep. which is a long time pennsylvania basketball power no maybe doubt. the preeminent of the last 20 years no doubt but not so much in football until very recently yeah newman garetti philly catholic yeah. league the saints they're good, 11 and three. I forget what their winning streak is up to. It's quite a bit. They've won seven, eight, nine games in a row, but everybody who's still playing has won seven, eight, nine, ten 10 games in a row. Philly sure. Catholic League, rematch, rematch. They played in this game last year against Wyo, and Wyo wiped oh, them out. that's right, I Four, forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, 42 to six, I had forgotten too, 42 to six. Uh, it was 42 yeah. to six, and as I remember correctly, Newman Goretti scored first. And then they made some Unanswered. they made some adjustments defensively. Yeah, and that was the end of the drama. You yeah. mentioned last week, Wyo is oof. They got up twenty-one nothing quick on Danville. We figured that'd be a pretty good game. That Danville team had all kinds of crooked numbers, and they had all those shutouts. Wyo gets up twenty-one zip, bang. Danville scores nineteen unanswered. Danville has a chance to win it late, field goal, time running out. Kid makes the kick and wow, they knock off Wyo and go to the state semifinals. Miss the kick. Wyo holds on by a ant thread. This is the kind of matchup where in the past, a lot of times, uh, like the great Mannheim Central teams would play in the first round of states against one of the teams from that part of the world. And yeah. it was clear that they had not seen the kind of sophisticated offense and yeah. passing game. Agreed. But they've probably seen the wing team. Yeah. Right? I mean, they've think. probably seen something like the way why I'm missing plays. That's not yeah. an explanation or anything. Yeah. Just a thing. It's just no, a you're thing probably to think right. Uh, a couple of Goretti names to know. This Sean Battle kid must be really good. Running back, D back, uh, Boston College, commit. He's going to go play. Oh. What conference is BC in these days? Shows you what I know. Uh, they're in the ACC. ACC? Yeah, they're in the ACC. There you go. Uh, linebacker, Sam Hobbs. Offer from Syracuse, he's legit. And this Deshaun Dotson kid, Penn State, Texas A&M, Miami have offered. So they got yeah. some studs, but uh, we know what Wyo is. We know is. what Wyo is, and they, and they beat up on him last year. Yeah. John, what do you got on Wyo? What do I got on Wyo? Uh, Anything. I, not much, but I know Newman Goretti being the basketball power, you would think yeah. that kind of trends. I'm wondering, is Dotson the younger brother of Jahan from Penn State days, maybe? Not sure. Do uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm also curious. Not sure. Last week, we were talking about Boston College, I believe, offering mm -hmm. a lot of Bishop McDevitt guys. I guess it's just something True. about the Northeast area that Boston College, I obviously guess. being the Northeast, loves these kind and of And also, players. Boston College is a Catholic school. Bishop McDevitt's a Catholic school. Maybe there's a connection there. Okay. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not, you know. Just, uh, but just, kudos to a basketball school and yeah. Newman Goretti now coming on the football stage. I mean, yeah. oftentimes it was, there's always been March, you know, we get to March and we're banging our heads. Darn it, a LL team has to play Newman Goretti and we'll see what happens. And yeah, it, it has comes happened down, a lot. You're right. Astonical. It comes down to the wire out, and Newman Goretti usually Donald. always wins this. So. You're right. Uh, 2,000 yard backs for uh, Wyo now. Charlie McIntyre, Matt Kramer, both went over 1,000. 
last week in the Danville game, and Drew Eisenhower's at like 850. So if Wyo gets two more games, they can have three 1,000-yard backs, which is pretty gnarly. And if they win, they'll play the following week at the state championship. Do For the third year the in a row. Semis are? Uh, Bell Vernon against Central Martinsburg. Uh, Bell Vernon's pretty good. Whippeals, you know, they've been ranked. It's a lot of syllables. Yeah. One, two, three in the state all year. <laughs> so that's kind of been the collision course game because Central Valley, which beat Wyo the last two years, moved, moved up, up to 4A. Yeah. So Bell Vernon was going to kind of be that 3A team out west. That's the collision course matchup, but that's why you play the game. That's why they play them, John. That's why they play the game. That game right. that's, Speaking sat- of which- that's Saturday, by the way. Saturday yes. of one at that's the a- Germantown a- Super Site in Philadelphia. Right. Enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, all right, in the next one, we've got uh, the amazing Cocalico Eagles Oof. against a team that was the opponent in the most famous game in Lancaster Eleven League history. It's true. The, true. Uh, the Ice Bowl, Snow Bowl, whatever you want to call it, when Mannheim Central beat them in double overtime in the best game I have ever seen in any sport in my life mm. uh, for the state championship. John. Uh, Cocalico and Pine Richland. Cocalico and Pine Richland. Um, last time I saw Pine Richland football, five yeah. years ago, yeah. Class 6A state semifinal in Altoona, Mansion Township. Park. You and I were both yes. there. 28-7, Pine Richland was your winner. They're now down 5A, so it's cool to kind of interesting just to see them back here. But looking at the numbers uh, the other night, I'm not blown away by by what Pine Richland has just as far as print, but again, that's why we play the game. And sure. feels kind of a lot of the same way. And they have a couple losses. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and the interesting thing there, Pine Richland begins the year one and three overall. They make a switch. They take Ryan Palmieri from running back to quarterback. They have since won ten in a row. Now wow. eleven and three overall. Kind of similar in a sense to Cocalico in that the Eagles have been using somewhat of a two quarterback system earlier they were uh, yeah. and you know their backups still kind of see some minutes every every now and then um, you did a good stat I thought in one of your notebooks as far as opponents uh, or I'm sorry as far as losses Pine Richland three losses mm-hmm. those opponents are by those opponents combined record are 19 and 14 overall mm-hmm. Cocalic is four losses their opponents are combined 44 and six wow. overall mm-hmm. so you got to think wow Battle I don't tested. know. Battle tested. I like co- give Cocalico an edge there. All right, some names to, to look out for. We mm-hmm. talked about Ryan Palmieri, 600 some pass yards, I believe 1,600 rushing yards combined, 25 touchdowns. Um, they're running back Ethan Piller, uh, 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns. And then Ryan Palmieri, the quarterback, also plays on the other side of the ball, 90 tackles. And then their leading tackler, mm-hmm. Max Heckert, 111 tackles, has an offer from Marist. Speaking of offers, up front, Pine Richland has a big guy in Ryan Corey. He's only a junior, has offers from Toledo, Kansas, and I'm missing one other D1 offer. Hmm. Uh, they have a wide receiver named Andrew Mellis, and he has an offer from Dayton that he got back uh, during the preseason time. I haven't seen anything since that point, but all that is to say, anytime you get to this point in the year, there's going to be talent yeah. on both sides yeah. of the ball. We talked last week as far as, man, Exeter, they have a gigantic offensive line. How's Cocalico going to stack up? Well, Eagles handle business there. And it sounds yeah, like do. Pine Richland has a pretty similar, yep. formidable offensive line. Yep, two fun Pine Richland facts. Their O line averages 267 pounds per man. They got a 290 kid and a couple of 275 kids up front. So Pine Richland's got some beef. Size. They have good size. And Ryan Palmieri, the quarterback, wears number 25. He kept nice. his running back number. I don't like it. So he's back there chucking passes as number twenty-five. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was watching some. I was watching some film work. Pine, Pine Richland is uh, is north of Pittsburgh. It's very suburban. Uh, they've had. Uh, it's sort of like Cumberland Valley, maybe around good, here, yeah. somewhat like that. They've been in the state finals in six A in basketball just a couple years ago against Lonnie Walker. Oh, that's right. It uh, was in right. Reading. Uh, so <laughs> so this is a school that that plays a lot of sports well. Um, speaking of Boston College, I just thought of this. They had a quarterback a couple years ago. I think his name's Phil, Phil Jer- Jerkovich. Yeah. Went to Notre Dame yeah, and ended right. up at Boston College yeah. and had a really good college career. That's right. Pro style, 
good quarterback. I was wondering, because yeah. when I was doing my homework, I'm like, whatever happened to that quarterback? So I'm Went to Boston College and yeah. ended he's up the, playing two or three years. He's starting. the kid who played against Township. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Township played okay that game, but and they couldn't finish. They fumbled in the red zone, right. and, if I recall. And had an uncharacteristic slow start, yeah. and then they kind of figured things out, but it was a little bit too late. Yeah. yeah. I don't. It's funny when you look at these games, because it's like, whip, whip, oh my gosh. Can Free, you? Go ahead. Can you just explain to those who are unfamiliar, yeah. uh, Pine Richland District 7 champ, Cocalico Correct. District 3 champ, yeah. and we're playing in Pine Richland's backyard in Altoona. Yeah, halfway. Because this point in the year, it's hard to find host sites it is. that are both one willing and two, yep. you know, well, have But a, also they alternate east and west every right. year, right? Don't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they try to, but I think right. when they get to this game, it's like halfway. I've seen some unbelievable Twitter wars over Right. Venues for high school games. You got to put your site up. If you don't put your site up, they're right. like, why don't they play this game at Bedford? Well, because Bedford didn't put their right. site up. You got to have the staffing for yeah, it. Yeah, you got to want to do it. And this time of year, it's like basketball season and starts Friday night and they're in the gym now. But I would argue that I, w I wonder if, there could, if, they, if some schools couldn't be talked into doing it. I don't think they try to talk schools into doing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's why Mansion Park hosts a lot because right. they know they have a yeah. really great site. And you know, they'll get some gate. And So for those yeah. who are wondering out there, that's why. Yeah, what I was gonna say, it's funny because Mannheim Central, you know, has played Pine Richland. They've played Gateway. They've played West Allegheny. Uh, they played Thomas Penn, Jefferson. TJ, Penn Hills. And you're like, wow, what to make of these Pittsburgh teams? You never know. And I remember the one year Central went out to Altoona and played this West Allegheny team that was just supposed to be like unbelievable. And Central put 50 up on them. Like, bang, yeah, 50. Yeah. And you're like, wow, okay, well, maybe they weren't, sorry, West A fans, maybe they weren't as great as, okay, the numbers maybe, but I never know what to make of these games. And I'll tell you oh, right hey, now. The the last time Cocalico was in the yeah. state semifinal, uh, Two 2019, years ago? final Three. score, 56-49 Cheltenham. Cheltenham. When do you see a score like that with Cocalico? You know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this game gets to that. I, and I, I'm going to make a homer pick this week, and I'm, I'm going to take Cocalico. They just can't I lose. I like them too. They can't lose well, I, right I now. Would think, I would think why I'm missing in the – looking at these two games, I think why I'm missing is a favorite. I would say yes. Uh, and and I, I I don't think that Cocalico – I think most people will probably consider Cocalico a slight underdog. Probably. And, I mean, they I'm not arguing week. with you. I'm, I'm yeah. not disagreeing with your pick. But, yeah. uh, and so, but I think these are both gettable for, for the local teams. I, like, oh, absolutely. Teams. I agree. Yeah. I, Cocalico is on some kind of a roll. So we could have. Chucky Drain – Tyler Angstadt, Josh Meyer, who's playing unbelievable at quarterback, Sam Steffi. They just refuse to lose right now. How can and you not be on a roll if your name is Chucky Drain? Chucky Drain. He's, he's, uh, he's been unbelievable. I like it. I like uh, it. Unbelievable. <laughs> good good for Cocalico and Wyo. Still well, we standing. probably say this before, but I, I'm not sure that we've ever seen exactly what Cocalico has done here, given the first half of their season mm -hmm. and the second half. I think this is completely unique in my gargantuan experience watching these things. Agreed. So we'll see what happens Absolutely. Next. It's going to be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's it, gang. Uh, this has been the LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Bobby Ray Hall. Alexis, for John Walk, for Jeff Reinhardt, I'm Mike Gross. See you later. <laughs>